Hey everyone, so in my opinion, the animals are the weakest slash most underwhelming part of Planet Zoo, especially if you compare them to the building system or building in general. Planet Zoo has more so become Planet Builder in my experience. So I am going to sit here and give five of my ideas on how Frontier could improve the animals in Planet Zoo, make them more of a standout. And this is all built on expectations that Frontier set themselves. Because in the months leading up to the release of the base game of Planet Zoo, they released these developer journals in which they really hyped up the animals. Hyped up how special and unique they would be. Hyped up that you would be able to form an emotional connection to your animals. And uh, yeah, honestly, I wouldn't be able to tell you guys the name of the last animal that died in any of my zoos. And I am 80 or 90% sure that you guys won't be able to answer that question either. Yeah, actually, let's put that thing to question. What's the last animal that died in your zoo with name, of course? And of course, don't look it up beforehand, even though I would cheat on that and look it up before putting it down in the comments just because I want to look smart. But I trust you guys not to be like me. But yeah, what's the name of the last animal that died in your zoo? Just to check if you have a little bit of an emotional connection to your animals. Onto the list. So I have five ideas on how Frontier could improve the animals. The first one is give animals actual personalities. They have some sort of like personality species wide already. Like a red panda is going to be more shy than any of your lemurs. That's already there. But I am talking on an individual level. If there could be like some like these personalities don't have to be very intricate can just give them basically traits like they have in the sims although make personality traits actually mean something unlike in the sims but like oh red panda a is aggressive so he's going to pick more fights red panda b is social so he's going to try and interact with more red pandas or other animals and red panda c is a shy little hermit so they are just always up in their hidey holes up in the trees so like having individual personalities to animals makes it not only for me more interesting to keep them because i just want to scream stop picking fights red panda a stop being up in that tree red panda c i I want to complain about my animals basically, but having individual personalities to your animals makes it more interesting to keep them because you can just see at a moment's glance, oh, that's a red panda C because he's up in the tree again. That's a red panda A because he's completely scarred from all the fights that he has picked. Having individual personalities would make it more interesting to keep the animals, would make it more like you would be able to make more of a connection to them because it's not like every red panda is going to be the same and these personalities could go in two ways it could be just like a trade system like you have in the sims or they could be kind of like how they are doing life expectancy fertility and size right now in the game with bars and meters which would actually probably be the more interesting choice because then you have like different levels of aggressiveness, different levels of socialness and shyness and whatever other traits you can give animals. But yeah, giving animals individual personalities would actually fulfill the expectations that Frontier set themselves on like, oh, I can now build an emotional connection to my animals because they are actually individuals and not just a nice looking animal but there's nothing behind the nice looking appearance so that's the first of five points let's go to the second of five points which is make pack animals more visibly pack animals with that i mean that i can't count the amount of times that like i have three lines in can the amount of times that they have been in opposite corners of their habitat far outweighs the amount of times that they are together like i at a moment's cost wouldn't be able to tell if lions are pack animals or group animals i of course know that they are like they are the most iconic group animals i would say the amounts of times that like pack animals don't really behave like pack animals i would say or group animals also just relationships between animals are just not really visible unless it's like a parent and a child or basically a parent and a juvenile animal that's the only relationship that i usually see where the child is like following the parent is trying to play with the parent like that's amazing that i really love to see that but as soon as the animal grows up that's lost 
Like there's no kind of like relationships between adult animals unless it's for the reason of breeding slash mating. So I basically want to have relationships between animals be more visible, but on a base level have pack animals and group animals just be more visibly recognizable as pack slash group animals. And then like, yeah, the deeper system then would be the relationships thing. But at the base, group and pack animals should be able to be visibly recognizable at a moment's glance as a pack slash group animal, I would say. And then the relationships would be a fun addition especially if you then also have the personality system because i think this was mentioned in a video i did a year ago where i talked about my issues about basically pensu in general that like yeah not every line is going to try and fight for being alpha if they are like brothers they could peacefully coexist if there's a very timid one then they could very well easily exist together in one but anyway, I'm going way too long on the second of five points, so I'm going to go to the third. For the third of five points, fine-tune the climbing system. I have seen way too many moonwalking monkeys for this to be funny anymore, is basically what I'm saying. Or I've seen way too many Superman jumps from one side of the habitat to the other. And I especially am a little bit tired of animals being on a climbing element and then suddenly just becoming a statue and rotating 180 degrees as if they were on like one of those cake decorator platform thingies that you could turn around. And I do commend Frontier for having the climbing system because it's a difficult system to implement, especially given the creative freedom that they have in the game or they put in the game. Like they had to make a climbing system that A can accommodate realistic climbing elements. But B can also accommodate the strange contraptions that I potentially could make or anyone else could make. Like to make a system that could accommodate both. I commend Frontier for the climbing system that they have. Because it must have been a bitch to try and get that in. But it just it needs a little bit of fine tuning I would say. Just so that animals become more immersive. I could potentially also hear tangent into bug territory but i think that's just a whole case on its own so i'm not going to go there so the fourth of five points give animals preferences i would love to have a kind of system where the animals sort of incentivizes you to build their habitat according to their natural habitat such as monkeys wanting to have a shelter up from the ground, seeing their major food source for like other animals. Oh, they want their shelter to be underground. Yeah, I've actually tried this with my fennec foxes. In nature, fennec foxes have burrows. I recently made that giant snake habitat. The, ha the sleeping area or the shelter for the fennec foxes in that one is completely exposed. Like there's a floating island on top of it because... It's Keanu Bazaar, so of course there's a floating island. But on all the other sides, it's completely exposed. And then I made a very realistic one. Well, realistic, the burrow is a little bit large, but that's because of the hitboxes of the animals. But I made a habitat with a realistic burrow for my fennec foxes. Yeah, uh, they don't care either way. Like, they only care about how far is the shelter. I would love to have like a system that incentivizes you or like it doesn't push you or makes you build natural habitats but kind of incentivizes you by like I don't know giving you like extra points if you make something that looks like their natural habitat. Planet Zoo really focuses heavily on conservation. Frontier wants you to build habitats that go with the natural needs of the animals, go with the well-being and such and I just basically want a system that kind of punishes me for building doggy houses up in the sky. And that actually moves me onto the fifth and final point of this five ideas on how Frontier could improve the animals, which is make animals more difficult to keep. Basically, give me a punishment for not treating my animals well. Because right now, Planet Zoo is so forgiving. I hit my mic, so sorry for that. But Planet Zoo is so forgiving that I, in the Bira days, and this is, I would say, still the case nowadays, 
with Ozaru, which was my Bira Zoo, which was a franchise zoo, so I had to take care of animal well-being. I legitimately went, I think, shopping, or I don't know what I did, but I left my game unattended, running Planet Zoo, running Ozaru, for probably around 6 hours. The only thing that I noticed when coming back was that some of my animals died of old age. And you can still do this, I think, in franchise to this day, where you can just leave the game unattended. Yes, there might be some animals that die of old age, but there's no other sort of punishment for not taking actual care of your zoo, of your animals. And it would be fun if you did this in like a way of random events, where it's like an earthquake happens and all your barriers break. Or, oh, a plague happens and a lot of your animals get sick and you really have to work to try and fix all of that. And you could, of course, think of other random events, but not only would this kind of punish you if you leave your game unattended because I left Ozaru unattended not only because I could but also because the money would just keep rolling in if you make a few good habitats and set up enough donation boxes the money will just keep rolling in random events would basically punish you for leaving your game unattended but it would also break the just cycle of always the same because planet zoo so far every day in planet zoo is the same there's nothing that kind of changes things besides maybe animals giving birth, maybe animals dying. Like, that's the only thing that really changes. So having like random events that could potentially punish you for not really being 100% with your animals would be a nice addition. But that's it for this list of ways that Frontier could improve the animals and just improve the connection that the player can make with their animals. So to sum it all up, point one, give animals personalities. I want to be able to scream at my Rapenna to come out of the tree even though I know it's shy. Or I can see a Rapenna walking that's again trying to pick a fight. Like I want to see like personality in the individual animals, not just as a species, but in the individual animals. Point two of five, make pack animals more visibly recognizable as pack animals. I want to, like even if I didn't know, I want to be able to see or look at my lions and say, yeah, that's a pack animal because they are huddled together. You could go deeper here and make, so like I want to see more kind of relationships between individual animals like brothers and such and Number three or five is fine-tune the climbing system. Again, I commend Frontier for even having a climbing system. It's an incredibly difficult thing to pull off in the game. Actually, I commend Frontier for all of the things in Planet Zoo because as far as I know, Frontier has never really done anything with animals before Planet Zoo. So commend Frontier for all of this. And then number four out of five is Give animals preferences, basically make it so that Poison can't build his doggy houses up in the sky. Or just incentivizes you to build their natural habitats in, in that way. Make you learn a bit more about the animals because, yeah, I haven't really opened the Zoopedia unless it was for a modded animal, so there's that. And then the final number on the list, number five, make animals more difficult to keep. Basically make it so that you get punished if you just leave your game running unattended. Or just like, like you could do that right now. You could open up Planet Zoo, open up your franchise zoo and just, I don't know, browse YouTube. Maybe you're watching this video while Planet Zoo is running in the background. <laughs> That's it for the list. Nothing of this comes out of me just trying to bash on Planet Zoo. I love Planet Zoo. I wouldn't be playing it for two years if I didn't. But I just see that there's like there is still so much potential when it comes to like making the animals better, improving the animals. Because as I said in the intro of this video, the animals in Plants Zoo are kind of underwhelming with how much they are being hyped up by Frontier. Yes, I am a sandbox builder. You might say, oh Poison, you don't really care about the animals, they are accessories. Yes, but they didn't have to be. Like I love watching my animals. It's just that they have kind of been negated to a background position because the building system and just building in general far outshines all of the animals. So yeah, that's my ideas or those are my ideas for how Frontier could improve Planet Zoo. I want to know 
do you guys feel like the animals in Plan Zoo right now are kind of underwhelming, especially if you take into consideration how much they are being hyped up by Frontier? And maybe you disagree, and that's totally fine. If you think the animals are great, that's great. I personally just believe that they could be better. Like, they are decent, but they could just be so much better. So, yeah, that's it for today's video. I'm going rambly mode, so I'm going to stop it here. So, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, there is the like and subscribe button. If you want to see more, there's a notification button. But before that one starts working, I will be more interested in the animals. Yeah, hope all of you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.